Nick, in thinking about the nature of reality, whether there's a God, atheistic ideas, the position of human beings is, is really important. And one of the questions that we should ask is the, what's our future? I, I don't mean the future in 10 years or 50 years or even 100 years, even some of the predictions, but if we look out really far, not just a thousand years, but a million years, I mean, look at the far, far future for humanity. What can we see? Well, let's assume that we make it there. So okay. one possibility is that disaster happens. Things technological progress come to an end. Let's assume that doesn't happen. I think it's fairly likely that um, what you might imagine happening in a million years could happen a lot sooner. I think there are these technologies, in particular one, which is um, super intelligent, super intelligent machines that if and when they are developed will make whatever could happen afterwards happen very quickly afterwards. So here is one scenario that I think has a reasonable degree of probability, which is that at some point, maybe in this century, maybe later, but it could well be in this century, we develop uh, super intelligent machines. Machines that outperform humans in, in, in general intelligence, creativity. Um, now, once you have those super intelligences, uh, everything else speeds up tremendously because then you have not human inventors, but you have a super intelligent inventor. Um, and so at that point, everything that is physically possible kind of becomes um, technologically feasible. And what actually happens after that point depends on the value structures of this super intelligence. Um, unwisely programmed, this super intelligence would be very powerful because it would have the intelligence and technology to make the world into whatever it wants. And you could imagine disaster scenarios where it has been programmed with the goal of uh, producing as many paper clips as possible. <laughs> and it's really good at this. So the whole universe turns into this paper clip maximization, like a huge factory for making paper clips. Or it could be something else. You, you, you have programmed the computer to find the answer to a difficult mathematical problem that we happen to be curious about. And it tries its best to solve the problem by transforming Earth and the whole solar system into a giant computer to try to calculate the answer. So these are within the realms of possibility. But if we are more successful, um, we would have managed to transfer our human values uh, as a defining goal structure for this super intelligence so that what it would do would be to help us realize our human values. I hope not all of our human values. No. Um, and it's an interesting problem how you would, if, supposing you actually were capable of creating a super intelligence and, and you were the programmer responsible for giving it its goal structure. Like, wh how would you actually go about that? It would work all the time if it were mine. Yeah, but what would it work to do exactly? Yeah, right. What would count as working? Yeah. I mean, if you if you think about it, it's so you could just postulate in some let's let it make all humans happy or something little. Once you start to think about what kind of goals you would give this thing, um, you don't want to get into a position where you sort of determine for all future the limits of mm. what could be achieved. Because one of the great things about human civilization right now is it's open-ended. And we might be mistaken about a lot of things, but there is a possibility that we can discover that one day and overcome our limitations and discover new things that we have overlooked. So to come back to your question, I think one possibility for what the world might be like in a million years is exactly that it has been created through this super intelligence that reflects in some sense, uh, human values or some extrapolated human volition. Um, and then the question becomes, what is our sort of deepest goals for the world, which you could have different views on. The assumption you're making is that this super intelligence really can do virtually everything. I mean, alchemistically, I mean, it, it, you're saying it can really transform matter. I mean, you, well, you, you, within limits. So. 
I mean, it would be bound by the laws of physics. Uh, you know, there would be certain material constraints. It would have to get to the planets of matter in order to be able to use it and so on and so forth. But among the things that humans care about, um, there is a huge space within the laws of physics to arrange things. And so the difference between the worst life and the best life is ultimately different in the configuration of some little local part of the yeah. universe, like your brain makes a difference between bliss and, you know, <laughs> agony. And so all those things, it would be possible for a super intelligence with advanced nanotechnology to, to rearrange and control. Um, and so to predict the future in that scenario, you really got to think about the values that this super intelligence would have been endowed with. And if you could figure out what those would be, you might be able to predict what would happen millions and millions of years after that, because those values would be preserved. Well, what you're talking about is something that could happen not in the wildly distant future, but in the almost imaginable future. I think, yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's a possible. I mean, nobody knows how long it will take to build a super intelligence, but it could happen within uh, the next 50 years or it could take longer. But if you think it could happen within 50 years, it would be almost certain to happen within a few hundred years. Unless we destroy ourselves before. Right. Yeah. Um, but so that's, that's one, I think, fairly like this. Now. So here is another. Um, where instead of the first super intelligence being created by some team of programmers, and it's like a unified system that becomes very smart. Um, suppose instead you have several different intelligences that gradually improve. So you have a population of super intelligences. You might get this by uh, at some point mastering the technology of uploading where you can scan a human brain and sort of replicate the neuronal network in a brain on a computer and you might have different uploads. Um, so you might have a population of these artificial intellects. So then you're in a different situation because here you have no single one power that can sort of determine the future, but instead you really have an ecology of competing agents, in this case, uploads. Sounds like a new opportunity for war. And evolution. <laughs> so you, you could have um, selection pressures setting in, uh, in in this population of uploads. So some uploads might prefer to have a quiet, peaceful life and not exert themselves too much and contemplate mm -hmm. beautiful art. And Maybe most uploads will do that, but you might have some uploads that think that I just want to make as many copies of myself as possible. Um, and you can think about what kind of a replicator within such an upload population would prevail. Um, and, and, and you might, by studying those kinds of dynamics, get a prediction from what, you know, what might be the future prevailing values that could occur. Um, let me answer your question in a different way now. I think what will happen in the future, unless we destroy ourselves first. You keep saying that. <laughs> because I think it's an extremely important qualification. Mm -hmm. um, is, in one sense, I think, fairly easy to answer, not with certainty, but with good probability, and in another sense, very difficult. So I think from the outside, I think what will happen in the good case is this, that there will be planet Earth, and then there will be um, a sphere of technological infrastructure that will um, spread at some significant fraction of the speed of light in all directions. Uh, colonization of planets that will be transformed into some suitable infrastructure, maybe computing material. And after this process has been started, it will just be more of the same. So if you look one, billion, one million years into the future, the sphere will just have grown bigger, and then you come back and look in, a, in, in another 10 million years and nothing will have changed from the outside, it will just have grown bigger. Nothing else really happens after that. Um, so that sounds like a very boring thing. There is a very predictable growth of civilization in all directions at some fraction of the speed of light. So that's the thing that would be relatively easy to predict. But the other question you might ask is, what about the inside of this technology <laughs> sphere? Like, what is going on there? What kind of lives are led? What experiences are... Uh, had and and that would be the difficult question and uh, where it's much more difficult to predict um, for two reasons. I mean, first of all, there are different possibilities and we don't know which one. But then, even if you could 
pick the possibility that we'll actually obtain. It might still be difficult to understand it in that if this sphere of um, you know, technology contains life forms that are very different from us, we might not be able to sort of intuitively understand what, what such lives would be like, what it would be like to be a Jupiter brain, like a brain the size of Jupiter. I mean, <laughs> presumably those could have thoughts and feelings and concerns that are as inaccessible to us as, as our concerns are to, to, you know, a rat or something, that we shouldn't assume that our mental lives are some anywhere near of exhausting the, the realms of the possible. We might be just as ignorant about post-human lives as, as, you know, rodents are about ours. So there might be these depths of human experience, concerns, culture, creativity, relationships that we have literally no, no ability to fathom. Um, so that's another possibility of what might happen. It might be full of those kinds of exist, transcendent existences.